Like the editor of Charlie Hebdo, Stéphane Charbonnier, New York-based activist Ayan Hersi Ali, was and still is on an al-Qaeda hit list. She says the West needs to acknowledge the link between radical Islam and violence, and in the wake of the attacks, the media mustn't be silenced in its pursuit of free conscience and expression. Ayan Hersi Ali was born into a Muslim family in Somalia. She became a politician, activist and writer in Holland, where her friend Theo van Gogh was brutally murdered over a decade ago after the two collaborated on a film about the treatment of women in Islam. She joined me from New York a short time ago. Ayan Hersi Ali, welcome to 730 how do the latest killings in Paris fit in with what you've described as a surge of Islamist killings in the world? Well, first I feel like a broken record because for the last 13 years I have been saying the same thing over and over again. There is a strain in Islam that is political, that is inspired by the Quran and the Prophet Muhammad, that is expanding over our globe it's not limited to this continent or that continent this country or that country this community or that com community it's all over the place and that we must acknowledge this when you say we must acknowledge this this link between violence and radical islam how should this practically be done Islam is not only a religion, that part of it is politics. The important part, the most important part of Islam is politics. So first of all, I want us to digest that, which is very difficult to digest, but I think the inhabitants of Sydney now know that. And once we digest that, then we have to say, okay, here's what we have. When it comes to military power, what the enemy has, we are far, far more powerful. When it comes to police power and resources and money, we have more than they have. Where they're defeating us is in our, and this is self-censorship. For those of us who love life, the men and women who love death and who choose death, where they're defeating us right now is in the battlefield of ideas. Are you saying that everyone who describes themselves as a believer has the propensity for violence? I am saying that every person who is a believer in Islam has to acknowledge this schizophrenia within Islam. If you believe that Muhammad is your moral guide, then you have to accept that there was a peaceful character in Muhammad and that there is a warlord, a military man, a beheader, man who sold people into slaves. And that in the 21st century, if there are people who say, well, he's our moral guide in, pe in peaceful ways, acknowledge that. But if they hark back to his bad side, then we also have to acknowledge that. We see in the aftermath of the Paris attacks that mosques around France have been attacked. Isn't this the result of demonizing all Muslims? It is not the result of demonizing all Muslims. It is an expression of anger. It is an expression of the individuals who are doing this to say, you need to stop this. And I'll tell you what is remarkable about the attacks in Paris last night. Those who attacked mosques made sure that there were no individuals, that they did not take human life. Now, I'm not condoning the attacks. I don't think they should do attacks. I don't think they should answer with violence. But I'll tell you something. The longer we wait with acknowledging that there is a link between Islam and what just happened, the more people will die. And how many more incidents like this one, how much more human life needs to be taken before we, the Western world, acknowledge this and fight it? Ever since 9-11, the Western world, as you call it, has spent a lot of money on security. We've gone to war. There have been wars. And yet the problem still persists. What practical measures do you advocate that Western governments, including France and Australia, can undertake? If we acknowledge that there is an infrastructure of indoctrination into the young hearts and minds, hearts and minds that are vulnerable, that are impressionable, of young men, mostly young men, 
but also of women. And that we have allowed this infrastructure to seed in the West and to thrive. If we come to terms with the fact that this is and has been going on for a long time, that we need to dismantle, you ask for practical solutions. We need to dismantle this infrastructure of indoctrination and replace it, replace it with an infrastructure where we inculcate into the minds and hearts of young people an ideology on, or ideas of life, love, peace, tolerance. As you know, in the wake of the Paris attacks, the media has been showing solidarity with Charlie Hebdo. In your view, do you feel that the media in the past years has been self-censoring and will it continue to self-censor? You are still continuing to self-censor because you have not published or republished cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad. You have not honored Charlie Hebdo the way they need to be honored, which is they took a risk. They took a risk to stand up for the core values of Western civilization. And you, the media, are letting them down. You have drawn and published caricatures of the terrorists, but you have not published caricatures of the Prophet Muhammad. Can I ask you how much of these events, what happened in Sydney, the Paris attacks, how much of this is due to the power vacuum in Syria? Look, this, the idea of the Islamists, the idea that they can bring the world down through terrorism, among other means, to believe that Sharia is the way and the only way that human beings can live. That idea is so much older than what is going on in Syria and what is going on in Iraq. You personally have lived under threat of fatwa. You're on the latest Al-Qaeda hit list, which also shows the editor of Charlie Hebdo crossed out. Mm -hmm. What is daily life like for you? Well, the first thing that strikes me there is that they show the faces of the men that they want to kill, but they will not depict the images of the women they want to kill. That must tell you something. Well, explain that for us. Well, once again, according to the prophet, the images of women are misleading. And what are they afraid of? Why wouldn't they put my picture there? They put my name there. If in 2015, in 2015, we're asking ourselves these questions, you can just about imagine how much time we're wasting in understanding what this ideology is about. We know what they want. They've written it. It's all over the place. They, they never hide, never ever hide what their plan is. It's we who are confused and it's we who need to get out of that confusion. I and Hersi Ali, I really appreciate your time this evening. Thank you for speaking with 7.30. Thank you and good luck.